Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on CPUs, but the video as a whole is going to cover all sorts of topics. CPUs, RAM, drives, SSDs, NVMe, how to install your Windows operating system, how to update your BIOS, how to update uh, your server as a whole. So we're going to cover all sorts of topics. Make sure you click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R330 server. This video, like I said, is going to be uh, specifically focused on uh, CPU, so let's just hop into it. So um, there is one CPU socket with the R330. It's an LGA1151 socket, which means it takes a number of different CPUs. Uh, it takes some uh, Celeron and Pentium and even some i3, and we'll list uh, all the series that it takes up there. And then it takes what we specifically focus on, the Intel Xeon E3 1200 V5 and V6 series processors. Uh, and that's actually what we'll do here at the end of this is we're gonna upgrade it from uh, a V5 to a V6 and we'll show you kind of step-by-step -step instructions on uh, how to actually remove the old proc and how to install the new proc and everything that goes into it as a whole. So uh, one of the things that we get asked uh, all the time is uh, what CPUs do we recommend for the R330? And that's a great question. Um, and really it kind of depends on uh, what your application is. Um, if you're doing something more on the low end side, uh, then we have a list of our uh, go-tos for the low end. And if you have something on you know, the value side that you need, maybe a little bit more robust, but you don't need to bank the bank, or if you want to get the actual, absolute most out of it, we have some high-end CPUs. So let's hop in. So on the low end side, we recommend um, a couple of different uh, go-tos will be the E3 1220 V5, the E3 1225 V5, and the E3 1250. 30 v5 um, that's actually what we have inside right now is the e3 uh, 12 is either 20 or 30 I can't remember actually what we have in here but that's what we're gonna actually be removing right now is a low end one and we're gonna be upgrading it to uh, right below one of our high-end ones so um, in the specs on those are all four cores it's gonna be uh, ranging from 3 gigahertz uh, to 3.3 and 3.4 okay that's what you're gonna get out of those three procs okay the next we have our value procs uh, which are gonna be your e3 1240 V5, your E3 1270 V5, and your E3 1280 V5. All these aren't going to completely break the bank. They're going to be more expensive than your low-end ones, but you're going to get a little bit faster speed as a whole. All of them are four cores, and really everything in this whole series is four cores on the Xeon side at least, um, and you're going to get, as far as speeds, it's going to be 3.5, 3.6, and 3.7. Um, on the high-end side, we're going to switch and go to V6 procs, and that's going to be the E3 1240 V6, the E3 1270 V6, and the E3 1280 V6, and that's going to be 3.7, 3.8, and 3.9. And again, it just depends on what application you're doing um, and what you really need. I, I'm a big fan of the um, uh, E3 1240 and 1270 V5s. We build a lot of systems with those. Uh, those seem to be pretty popular for us for the most part. So, all right, cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hop in. We're going to show you uh, how to remove uh, the old proc, how to install the new proc, and some uh, just steps that you should take to be safe and protect the machine as a whole. Let's get going. So one thing I'll also recommend, you'll notice somewhere in ESD gear, it's definitely a good idea to uh, have some kind of protection to just be safe for the machine as a whole. Uh, so things that you're going to need for um, upgrading your CPU. You're going to need a rag to clean the old thermal grease off and just to make sure that the heat sink is clean as well before you reinstall it. You're going to need thermal grease for the CPU that you're installing and you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. So all right, let's hop into it. We're going to move all this to the side. We're going to pop the latch like any server you've been in before. And you'll notice, um, and we'll do a, um, in our different chassis video, kind of an overview of the whole system, uh, but you'll notice over here you have an air baffle that you're going to need to remove, and that's going to give you access to the dim slots and to the CPU. So what we're going to do is just lift the air baffle straight up. And as we discussed, there's only one CPU. So we're going to get our Phillips set here. And we are just simply going to unscrew it. And I like to do kind of a zigzag pattern personally while I'll go across um, just to relieve some of the tension on each side. All right, and you can feel it 
when it releases off. That's one of the reasons I like to use this as opposed to an automatic, but to each their own. All right, so now we're just going to lift this straight up. And one thing I do want to point out, um, you know, I don't know who installed this beforehand, someone at Dallas, obviously, but when you lift this up, uh, there could be thermal grease caked on the bottom. So you do want to be careful. I just kind of flip it over right away just so that I don't have thermal grease just falling off into here. So that's one of the things I recommend. And then, two, we need to make sure we clean the thermal grease off before we reinstall it. I'll do it um, not over the machine so that it doesn't fall onto it. So we're just going to, again, just lift it straight up. And honestly, there's nothing on there. It's actually not bad at all. Sometimes there's just a ton of thermal grease. Um, it looks like it's uh, done pretty well as a whole. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just clean this off screen and just get this uh, back to square so we can use it again, okay? Um, and honestly, since this isn't too bad, I'm going to go ahead and clean it in the socket and just get uh, get this portion done with. It's a, a nice clean area of the rag. And my goal here is I just don't want any thermal grease to, um, you know, sometimes when it's older, especially it gets really flaky, I just don't want it falling into the pins. Uh, if you can, get, if the thermal grease gets in there, it can throw some of the dim channels off, and uh, then all of a sudden your system's acting wonky, uh, and you just want to make sure that essentially we are uh, protecting the machine. So, all right, now that the, uh, the thermal grease is nice and clean, we're going to go ahead and push the latch. It's going to go down and over, so just down and over. And when you do this, you'll notice that this whole top comes off. All right. And now you have access to lift the CPU up. Now the CPU, since it is kind of small, um, it is kind of tough to grab. I'm going to grab over here where I get a little bit of extra space, uh, but just lift it and come straight up. Uh, one of the things that I've seen people do is when they lift their CPU up, uh, sometimes they'll let the corner kind of drag and it'll just wipe out some pins. So again, just try to go straight up. All right, so I'm actually going to do it without my glove on this one. It's a little bit tougher to get because it's kind of a smaller CPU and just lift it straight up straight up. Now I'm going to put my glove back on as soon as I install the next one. So a couple things. Uh, so we are going to be installing the uh, E3 1230 V6. So you'll notice right here there is a gold arrow and that gold arrow is how you know where to line up the CPU on the motherboard right here. That white arrow lets you know these are going to line up together so it's going to come down straight like this. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and go just straight down and install it and then I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. All right, now we're going to put thermal grease on it, and then we're going to put our heat sink back on top. All right, so we're just going to put a little bit of thermal grease right here in the middle, and we don't have to do anything too crazy. Um, you don't want to have too, too much, and even that could be a little bit much. Um, it'll be fine, but as a whole, you don't want too, too much because you don't want it uh, going all over the place and getting into everything else. You need enough just to keep the top uh, nice and cool, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and just put this away and keep it clean. Um, some people will take the uh, the plastic um, a little spreader and they'll wipe it all around. You can do that. Uh, we actually just put this straight down and uh, kind of smush it together and it'll go all over. So that's what we're going to do right now is just line our heat sink up and then go ahead and screw it back down. All right, so we're going to screw this halfway down and then we're going to do the zigzag and come over. Sometimes you have to push this kind of hard down. And this one, actually, I'm going to have to push a little bit hard down to get it to screw in. There we go. And then we're going to come over here. And really, the uh, the main takeaways that I would say is really just be careful when you are removing the CPU and installing the CPU. Just be careful of the pins. The pin is the most delicate spot. Um, that's really what you need to be the uh, the most careful for. And really, the, this upgrade as a whole isn't that tough. It's not that hard to do. Um, it's just more about taking your time um, and taking the right steps to make sure that you're being careful as a whole. So I appreciate you stopping by. If you made it this far, hey, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom-built servers for uh, your home, lab or your data center, we'd love the opportunity to earn your business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com at sales at cloudengine.com. We build all sorts of custom uh, new and used servers, uh, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, you name it. We'd love the opportunity to win your business. Take care, guys.